Welcome back to my garage. This week I'm set on getting some numbers from the engine. First step towards that is making an adapter for this uh, dyno RPM sensor. I used to take RPM from the ignition unit, but I'm currently not running that Ignitech ignition unit with RPM out. And this one doesn't have an RPM out circuit, so we'll have to mount this additional RPM sensor. Make a bracket. calculation of tool length here the holder started rubbing I think this is deep enough though gotta check if that sensor fits it's a boring operation should be to dimension and it is this could happen now I can set clearance between the sensor and this wheel with shims how to machine this into a trigger wheel it's around at the moment There was some stuff in the way, sorry about that. I'm not sure how much you saw of that. I bumped the camera and uh, this thing got in the way. mess in here I should really clean up but who has time for that might have noticed some attempts at smooth panning and crane shots I've acquired this gimbal actually I got inspired from one of the comments saying I should get a gimbal to mount on my selfie stick for uh, filming myself when I'm uh, traveling try that but it's harder than I thought I think it's much better to just do like this a really long selfie stick monopod and the camera just mounted on a ball head. I'm preparing for my trip to Germany and also I'm practicing my color matching between two cameras, my main camera and this B camera. Got about 0.5 millimeters now which is perfect.
I didn't think of this bolt when I set the clearance height. Luckily my machine's rapid moves aren't that rapid and uh, it powered through without losing steps or breaking an end mill or anything. Got it done. I'll hook up that hole sensor in place of the signal from the ignition unit and uh, heat up the engine and we're ready for testing. Now with readings from the dyno, we'll have to be careful, make sure the ignition unit is not firing too early. Check it with a light to not blow things up. I really should clean up the place. Might do uh, some slight cleaning whilst the water is heating up. Let's pull the plug slash drain plug and clean out all the oil. And we'll spin up the engine and see if the RPM sensor is working. Let's start it up, familiarize a little bit with the clutch and then see at what RPM we can start applying load and uh, see if we can get a run in today. That would be cool. That's what's smelling. <laughs> Poor drill. I forgot to turn off the drill. Around 12,000 RPM could be a good starting point. Maybe 11. Now the brake will ramp up to 15% at 12,000 RPM. Start ramping at 10,000. Let's see if I can handle that with the clutch. I haven't looked at the footage yet, but uh, I think my gimbal shots are uh, pretty much shit. <laughs> it's not as easy as you might think operating a gimbal. This might turn out to be a difficult task. 
operating the clutch and getting the dyno to cooperate at the same time. We need to use a more suitable dyno mode. I was using power suite now. So it started at a set RPM and then should sweep through the RPM range. You can see the results versus RPM here. Lots of fluctuations in RPM, like unusable graph. This is the versus time graph. Ran the engine an extended period this time. Almost 40 seconds. The part from uh, about 20 seconds to like 45 makes sense. It's a pretty much flat line hovering between uh, 10 and 12 horsepower. Between 22 and 34 seconds corresponds to between 16 and uh, 17 and a half thousand RPM. Power is staying fairly flat at 11 horsepower. Not much at all, but we haven't started playing with ignition and fueling yet. Ran out of space on the SD card, had to go inside and unload. Can't really remember where I was, but uh, here's a comparison between the raw data and the uh, default smoothing. That red line, that's uh, torque from the load cell with default smoothing, three. It can be set between zero and 10. The purple line, that's without, that's zero. No smoothing at all. You can see it bouncing up and down between around two Newton and eight Newton. And the red line is an average of that. You can also see how much of an impact these small bounces has on the power numbers. Torque times RPM is uh, horsepower, which means fluctuations in the torque numbers will be amplified in uh, horsepower numbers. You can see they're bouncing between 20 and uh, 2 horsepower. I think I'll need to choose a better brake controller scheme for this to work with this super peaky engine that can't run below 11,000 RPM and the clutch and all that. Another simpler option would be an inertia dyno. And I've got one. And I've also got a frame we could put the engine in and use that as a test bench on the inertia dyno. If you were wondering how slight the cleaning I did was, basically taking all the clutter from there and putting it here. <laughs> I need to do something about this. We're gonna try the load control option in your dyno. That's not PID control. And also we need to install that low pass filter on the input from the load cell to the box. I'm gonna go inside and organize all my footage and uh, I'll see you back tomorrow morning for more testing. I forgot to tighten these bolts yesterday. The dyno frame was basically just hanging from the retarder, not mounted up here. Don't think it would make much of a difference though, but having this whole beam suspended in midair can't be a good thing. I pulled the drain plug again, preparing for more testing. You can see that nice fat black band in the bottom of the porcelain of the plug. It means that we're running rich enough at the uh, full throttle. So that's a good thing. First plug chop in a while. Without chopping though. You don't really need to chop these really cold plugs because you can see right down in there. <coughs> Up until now we've been running power sweep with PID control. Trying to make that work. I think it will be really hard making that work when I have to clutch it out at like 12,000 RPM. We're going to try load control, which is not PID control. Load control is an alternative to PID control, specially made for water brake. It can also be used with other systems with slow brake control, very fast torque increase, and in general, anytime PID is difficult to make stable. I think this is a situation where it can be difficult to get PID to be stable. I've set start gain to 5% per 1000 RPM, and sweep rate is zero. So steady state at 14,000. Let's just see how it behaves and we'll uh, play with the start gain and see what happens.
gotta remember to focus on the goal now. We can't step by step test the soundness of various parts of my engine design, whilst at the same time trying to make this dyno work, which is a project in itself. I've got an awesome solution, it just occurred to me. Remember that speedway bike I borrowed this clutch from? Well this clutch still fits in that frame. Won't be much work making mounts for this engine in that frame. Put it up on the old inertia dyno. No complexity. Just calculating acceleration of a roller. No load cells or anything for now to remove complexity and test the engine. Not my dyno design. Using that speedway frame is a much quicker solution than using the RS50 frame over there. Stay tuned for next time when we actually put this engine in a frame and probably get some proper dyno numbers. See you next time.